These puppies are about seven weeks old and one day they could become guide dogs. And while you might think you know where they come from, 6% of them have a surprising start to life. Hi, my name is Caitlin, I'm 16 years old and last year I was partnered with my first guide dog, Honey. She is a Retriever Black Labrador Cross and she has changed my life. Honey has made me more confident, independent and allowed me to socialise more. But I wanted to find out where dogs like her came from, so I'm meeting Matthew Bottomley, Head of Breeding Operations at the Guide Dog National Breeding Centre. So this is um, our puppy book, Caitlin, and um, this is where all the puppies come in at um, between six and seven weeks of age. They come in here um, and they receive their vaccinations, their microchips, uh, and they get a vet check as well to make sure they're fit and healthy to travel on to the next stage of their journey. Most of our puppies will be born out in family homes, um, so they're um, looked after by a wonderful group of volunteers and being attacked by a puppy as we speak. When a stud dog and a mum go together, how much of it is natural and how much is artificial? We always try to um, effect a natural mating if we possibly can. Um, we believe that's the right way to go and um, last year our natural matings, we did 94% of our matings were natural matings. But if we can't, for whatever reason, it doesn't, nature doesn't play its, um, play its hand in the, in the right way and we're unable to get a natural mating, then we will sometimes um, use artificial insemination. This is our cryogenic freezer. Um, in here we store samples of our uh, stud dogs, frozen semen in there. They're stored in liquid nitrogen at uh, around about minus 190 degrees centigrade. Um, and so we can keep that genetic material pretty much indefinitely. Um, two reasons for that. One, it acts as, a, as an insurance policy for us at Guide Dogs in case we have some dreaded disease that hits our dog population. Um, we have that genetic material preserved and secondly we use it to um, collaborate with other schools around the world internationally to exchange bloodlines uh, to make sure that our breeding program is as genetically diverse and healthy and vigorous as it can be. This is Natasha, she's a reproduction specialist at the breeding centre. So in here we have um, many frozen samples from up to 30 years ago and the archive samples are on the bottom row and they're stored in a vapour phase. The semen is stored in um, little tiny straws um, and all those straws are contained in goblets and the goblets are all um, stored in, in shelves um, and we label each individual straw so that we can always locate the semen from the, from the correct stud dog. This year, there will be about 1,200 puppies at the centre. They have about 275 breeding bitches and about 90 stud dogs. So how would you decide out of these puppies who'd be a breeding dog? A common misconception is that the dogs that we add to the breeding programme are often failed guide dogs. But it's actually quite the reverse. We're cherry picking the very, very best um, stock that we can, frankly, to add to the breeding programme. What we do is uh, look at the family tree, the pedigree. We look at all the, the qualities that the dog themselves has and that the dog has in their history. And also, if they've produced puppies in the past, then obviously we look at any success that they've had with that as well. Most of the pups at the centre are pure Labrador, pure broad golden retriever, or a cross between the two. But they also have German Shepherds. These are larger, a bit quicker, and have a greater drive. Curly Coated Retriever, Standard Poodles and Curly Coated Retrievers. When crossed with Labradors, these are more suited to people who are allergic to dog hair. Why do some of the dogs have nail varnish on them? When you have a large litter of puppies, and particularly if they're all the same colour, it can be really hard to distinguish one from the other. So just to help us identify them, and of course when they're a bit younger as well, it's even more difficult, um, we just put a little tiny blob of nail varnish on their, um, either on their shoulder, one of the shoulders, or on their, on their hind legs as well. Um, and sometimes under the ear flap even. It's really cool to see where the journey of a guide dog starts. Like some of these little black puppies remind me of honey, and it's just really cool to see how they will eventually grow up into working guide dogs.